SCP-016 Senient Microorganism Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-016 is to remain within the confines of a 5 meter cube room at all times, maintained at a temperature not to exceed by 0 degrees Celsius. SCP-016 itself is to remain in the petri dish in the containment cube at all times, unless directed by level 4 or O5 personnel. Full documentation of experiments SCP-016 must be submitted before and after samples and duplicates of SCP-016 may be taken. Failure to follow these procedures will result in termination or reassignment of as Class D personnel. Only authorized personnel may be permitted to obtain samples and experiment with SCP-016 under BC L5 containment conditions. If an outbreak does occur, despite the following aforementioned procedures, directive-based personnel are to implement a code sigma lockdown and containment plan. Infected personnel are to be terminated on site by security forces wearing standard mission oriented protective procedures MOPP antibiological and antichemical equipment should the infection not be contained after 48 hours the on-site nuclear device is to be detonated remaining personnel are not to be evacuated under any circumstances SCP-016 has been shown to survive up to six hours on hard surfaces and up to several minutes in air. High intensity ultraviolet light and high concentration of orthophthalidide solution have been demonstrated to be effective in disinfecting non-organic substances. Description SCP-016 is a blood bond pathogen recovered from a mine worker in who injured himself while working in a deep cold seam. Said wound would become contaminated with coal dust and from the mine possibly infecting the worker with dormant spores. Over the next several days, SCP-016 proceeded to infect the remaining employees at the mining camp, as well as the CDC crisis team dispatched to deal with the epidemic. Foundation personnel then took over the investigation and terminated all the affected personnel. Patient Zero was brought into captivity and the mine shaft was collapsed by explosive devices. SCP-016 has an incubation period ranging from 24 hours to 2 years, depending on the presence a number of other human hosts in the area. First symptoms resemble the common cold and include itchy eyes, runny nose, coughing and bodily aches. Phase 2 begins in 48 hours and consists of a controlled form of hemorrhagic fear and the organism causes a small amount of blood to become aspirated in the lungs creating aerosol effect. During phase 3, the host crashes and bleeds out, bleeding profusely from every bodily orifice including the nose, tear ducts, anus, skin pores, mouth, urethra and in case of females, vagina. Blood pressures skyrockets during the final stage. Hosts have been observed projectile vomiting blood and to a distance of 5 meters. Should the host survive this near total exaggeration, the pathogen will become dormant once more, returning to incubation phase. What distinguishes SCP-016 from other strains of hemorrhagic fear such as Ebola and Markberg is its unusual response to high stress. 
should the subject undergo a high stress situation such as a life threatening crisis the organism will change its survival tactic from rapid reproduction to rewriting the host DNA and stimulating of rapid cell division. Major psychological changes occur within the first 24 hours with the complete bodily reconstruction occurring within two weeks time. Most hosts do not survive this process due to heavy demands made on the body. An interesting side effect of the transformation is an increased aggressive urge. It is believed that this may be an attempt to maximize the spread of the virus in a manner similar to rabies. On a dundered note, subjects who undergo bodily transformation no longer appear to exhibit SCP-016's hemorrhagic properties. However, subjects infected by transformed hosts will still undergo the normal SCP-016 infection process. Thanks for watching the video, press the like button if you like this video and subscribe, it keeps us motivated to make more videos.